started. We got five speakers. Uh, first speaker is going to be Scott Asher with uh, Bayer. All right, thanks, Mark. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for holding on to the very end here. I know this is the last session, so it's kind of hard to stay on through the whole day. But again, my name is Scott Asher. I'm with our agronomic service team within Bayer, supporting our stone brands. And today, we'll give you a brief uh, update or, or looking back on 2017 performance. To spend most of the time looking at the three new varieties that we've introduced in the Stumble brand uh, for 2018. So first of all, if you haven't had a chance to go through our breeding facility, we've opened up a new location in Dawson, right outside of Albany, Georgia, and uh, Nina Dr. Nino Brown is stationed there, and they're doing a lot of uh, really good work, and they're obviously specifically breeding uh, for the southeast, so all the way from Alabama, Georgia, up to uh, the lakes to the South Carolina. We had a lot of focus in this specific region. And one thing that that breeding station allows us to do in our, in our program between our agronomic service team and our breeding team is have a very broad footprint of testing in the southeast. So this, this graph here just gives you the red dots are, is where our breeding team does the testing and evaluation, and the green dots are the ones that our agronomic service team tests on farms. So when we're looking at making placement recommendations or making advancement recommendations, we're using our knowledge that we've gained locally to help make those recommendations. So from a 2017 uh, pro, uh, performance perspective, uh, this first slide here is actually looking at both our APT, so our agronomic service data, reading data combined, looking at our current portfolio. We had a very strong performer, the Stumble 6182 in 2017, uh, and then we have some other varieties that have been in our portfolio, like 4949, and these are the two new varieties that we introduced in 2017. So a very good portfolio performance is compared to uh, in the area. If you look at third party performance, again, just looking at 2017, again, similar trends there, 6182, uh, top on the trial in the UGA trials across 19 locations. And you'll see a similar trend over in Alabama and Auburn, with strong performance of the end of our full season was 6182, but also other varieties such as 5115. So good performance from the Stone brand for 2017, and then I'm happy to introduce our two new varieties that we'll introduce in 2018. Starting, I'm going to go in order of maturity, just for a little highlight of the way that we number our varieties. Typically, it's either a four, five, or six. The first number is a maturity rating, the second number is the refinement of that number, so fours are early to mids, fives are getting a little longer more in the mid, and the six is in our full. The one be basically from zero to nine, the smaller the number, the refinement of that, so this is an early to mid to mid variety, and then we've got one that's a five eight, that's still a more of a full season, but still within the five. And that's how our numbering system works. Our trait package, this is our glycol liberty link, which is a full tolerance to liberty herbicide and also glyphosate. And this is our twin link uh, BT trait, so our two gene BT technology. So 5122, again, it's kind of an early to mid variety. It's got very good yield potential, very good fiber package. I know it's kind of hard to see here, but we have a very nice uh, package in terms of the overall fiber properties. It's a smooth leaf variety, offers moderate resistance to bacterial blight, and also good um, tolerance to persilium milk. If you look at really where this variety um, placement of it is primarily is in really in some of the northern delta areas, northern and mid-Atlantic areas, and really in the southeast. It's really for our full irrigated areas where we're planting potentially in our double crop behind wheat. Really strong performance of our corn within our early to mid with 49, 49, and a good uh, compared to a duck pine standard. Our next variety is Stonewall 5471 GLTP. And this one here is, again, kind of a mid-maturing variety still within the five series. Uh, but the trait package is our flat tall and every length. But this is our second introduction in our twin link plus, which is our three gene BT technology. Um, so it helps with overall control and also with resistant, resistant management as well. This variety is also smooth leaf, smooth leaf, very good for resilient milk tolerance. It's resistant to bacterial blight. So when you look at the both the trait package from a herbicide tolerance, worm control and then the native traits really has a full portfolio of traits in, in, that, in, the, in this particular variety. Now this variety is one that we see going across the whole eastern cotton belt. Performed very strong in the delta, very strong in the southeast, 
And just looking at the performance of 5471 versus something like 1646, very strong performance with that variety. So again, an early demand, very full trade package, one we see them going over across the broad area. Now the last variety is really one that we advance specifically for the southeast area. This is going to be Stone 5818 GLT. It's a medium to full maturing uh, variety. Um, again, very good um, quality package. Again, kind of hard to see. Moderate bacterial white, twin length, uh, smooth leaf, and also we see uh, very good early season growth out of this variety. The one thing that this variety is, we're going to be recommending it uh, on dry land. It's able to produce a very good stock. It's not one that's going to get out of hand from a growth control, but it will produce a nice stock in our drier conditions. And really, just from a yield pers perspective, you can really see that it even outperformed 6182, which had a great year in 17, a very strong performance in that dry land uh, segment. These are all dry land locations. So just looking at our portfolio uh, with our additions of our new three varieties, just from a yield perspective, uh, this was 6182, again, very strong performance in 17. There are three new varieties in the southeast as an improvement of our overall portfolio. Also brings traits such as bacterial blight, verticillia, and new tolerance. And then obviously with, with GLTP is our, our new introduction with our free gene VT technology. This is on dry land. Just want to re-emphasize that one more time specifically for this market. Look for 5818 GLT, uh, really strong performer in our dry land conditions in the southeast. And just a quick summary of our, of our portfolio. Again, as, as I mentioned, we're improving the quality, nice yield, and a very full trade package across the board. So with that, I'll take any questions. I think we have a little bit of time if there are any. Uh, I'll over to you next We've time. got a few minutes for questions. Okay. okay. <laughs> Second speaker is uh, Nick Shimon with, with Delta Pi. Thanks, Mark. Uh, again, my name is Nick Shimon. I'm the agronomist uh, for Delta Pi and Monsanto for uh, Georgia and then Florida going down the peninsula in the, in the eastern time zone. So, going to run through some new varieties uh, that we're having out for 18. Uh, won't focus much on our current stuff. Uh, we've had a booth set up, got a lot of literature, a lot of data stuff. If y'all are interested, y'all stop by there. But, a lot of new varieties, so we're going to focus on that. Just as a reminder, kind of go back through how we do our naming uh, for varieties. We take it for granted sometimes because we see it all the time. But uh, as an example, obviously DP's Delta Pine. For 1555, the 15, the first two of the year, it's released. The last two is kind of a relative maturity, larger the number, the fuller season, the smaller the number, the earlier the season. So we go from a zero to a 60, basically, in, in that, in that uh, range. B2 here is Bulgar 2, RF, uh, Roundup Flex, obviously just Roundup Tolerant. If you got into one of our nematode varieties, you see NR, that means nematode resistant, that's only southern root knot nematode, uh, but just for ease of marketing, you just call it nematode resistant. Um, B2 XF, XF is Extend Flex, so that's Roundup, Liberty, Dicamba. And then um, we have some of our new varieties. You'll see the 18 class will be a B3, so it'll be a Bulgar 3 extend flex. So just a little reminder there. This is our current lineup uh, that we offer. Basically, I'm showing this to show you that our Roundup Flex offerings are getting smaller. There's less demand on those from growers. Our extend flex offerings are growing, and you're going to see this uh, B3 XF grow as well from here on out. Most everything will be a, a B3 XF. All right, so new varieties that we released in 2018, we call it our classes 18 for Delta Pine. We actually had seven uh, belt-wide released, four that have a fit in the southeast, and of these four, I'm really gonna focus on these last two, uh, mid to full and a full season. That's really what our market is down here. But just so you know these numbers, um, if you see them anywhere, see them in the literature, you'll, you'll be familiar with them. You'll know that they are some new varieties. These three down here, uh, 1822 is an extend flex only for West Texas. Um, 1823 NR, it's actually a B2, not a, not a B3, but it's an early season nematode variety. This is for kind of the upper cotton belt. And then uh, 1845 was a, a mid to full for um, the lower mid-south of Texas. It didn't really have a fit here. So. 
So briefly on 1820, really the only thing I want to mention for it, it's an early season, bacterial blight resistant variety. So it's going to come in and really looking to replace 1518 and 1522. That's just how it stacks up from a plant mapping standpoint. But uh, better fiber quality than 1518, and it will out yield, or in our trials, out yielded uh, 1518 and 1522. So looks like it's going to have a pretty good fit for those areas. If you're looking at something planted late behind vegetables, behind wheat, might be a fit for you. 1835, another one kind of go through fast. It's a mid, mid to full. We tested it extensively in Georgia. It was one of the ones that we had. Um, one issue, it's a semi-smooth, so not exactly a smooth leaf. Um, bacterial blight susceptible. Oh, that didn't really cause us much trouble. Um, fiber quality is an improvement. Looks like it is a true mid. If you come in here to a 1538, which is another kind of mid to full, you'll see basically it's just a fiber quality improvement. Pretty close on the yield, no statistical difference. So, but these are the ones I really want to, want to focus on for a few minutes here. The numbers I want you to remember. So 1840, uh, B3XF, we tested this 16R343. So if you look at the OBT trials, you'll see that 343. Our NPE trials had that in there. Um, smooth leaf, aggressive PGR management, full resistance to bacterial blight, and then um, also fusarium out of a trial we had out of Auburn. It um, didn't show any higher level of fusarium susceptibility than the resistant check they had. So that's why I've got a fusarium resistance. Not a genetic thing, but just based off some data out of Auburn. Uh, plant mapping, not that important. So if you compare it to some current, kind of that same number, 1639. We don't grow here a lot, but you'll see a much better improvement. Uh, lower mite longer staple. Um, 1538 is really what we want to compare it to. So 1538, it appears it goes on that same acre, uh, that tough, dry land, limited irrigation, uh, stalk challenged acre. Little bit of improvement on yield. Main thing is a great improvement on fiber quality. That's our biggest weakness with 1538 is fiber quality. This really changes that. Um, for that kind of tough acre. So you don't have to sacrifice fiber quality for that tough acre with Delta Pine anymore. Um, but just because it's class 18 doesn't mean it's going to out yield 1646. You can see there 100 pounds less across uh, 47 locations. But fiber quality is actually going to be pretty similar to 1646. Um, pretty comparable, I think, uh, across the board. Just don't put it on a high yield acre where you're going to put 1646. That's just stability graph showing at low yield environments it does better. So that was 1840. That's the first one I want you to remember. The second one's 1851. Uh, full season, smooth leaf, you know, what we want to see uh, here in South Georgia. Aggressive PGR management, and it is bacterial light resistant. I should have put partial resistance. Uh, not, not exactly full, but a very high percentage of the plants have the, have the marker for resistance in it. Uh, plant mapping, just to show you that it is, it is a true full, I mean, it's fuller than 1646. When you compare it though on yield, we're still not looking at that high yield acre where we would have 1646, you're still gonna see a deviation there. Um, fiber quality, not quite as good as 1646, but a definite improvement over some of our current lineup. Uh, the main one this is gonna go on is gonna be like that 1840 acre, your tougher acre, but I feel like this variety is a little more versatile. Maybe, I, maybe I'll maybe i build it up too much. Maybe like a 1252. Does well dry land, does well irrigated, fits a very broad range of environments, has a very broad fit in, uh, in, in our geography, but it brings bacterial blight resistance and um, uh, some better fiber quality as well. So those are the, these are the three we tested extensively in Georgia. This is just to show you kind of how they yielded. They're all actually pretty close. You see that's a thousand pound cutoff down there. Um, maybe a little upside on the 1851. I really think that depends on the acre you put it on. That also may be because it's a true full season. Full season tends to do better um, in our geography than our, than our mid seasons do. But 1840, 1851, I think those are probably, your, uh, probably the two you're gonna remember for, uh, for 2018. And that's all I got, it's just a snapshot of our trials. We have this as a handout. These are our strip trials that we do internally in the company that our salesmen do. A lot of work and effort goes into this, so 
wanted to show that uh, just because it took a lot of time. So. But uh, any questions? I'll be glad to take those. If not, I'll be around afterwards as well. Any questions? Uh, you start making them for it. Yes. It's not quite as big as 16, 1646, but has it got a better, more bigger than 1646? So it could, that's a yes and no. The problem with that is it's all about seat production. Yeah, it really is. Is the seat a little bit larger than 1646? Probably on average it is. I don't know that it's going to be a large enough seed that you're going to see a big difference in it. I think a lot of that's going to, going to really be a seed production thing, so I hate to give you a yes or a no. I've seen 1555, one of our small seeded varieties, in certain years be the best thing you can have out there and pop right up out of the ground even though it's 6,000 plus seed per pound. So some of that, you know, some of that goes into how it was produced in seed production that year before. So I know that's not a exact answer you want, but that's probably the best I can give at it. <coughs> Any more questions? Right. Thank you. Speaker is uh, Brandon Phillips with Maricot. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself, Brandon Phillips. I'm the agronomist for uh, Maricot Next Gen, and just want to take a second to thank you. Uh, any growers in here or any retailers for your support in 2017? Because without any of you guys, uh, I wouldn't be up here talking. And you know, we had a pretty good year, and it's all because of you. Thank you very much. Uh, give you a little bit of background. We're still farmer owned. Uh, we're the last independent cotton seed company left in the United States. One person owns it. His name is David Hicks. And we hopefully will plan on staying that way for several more years to come. So just to give you a little brief history of uh, America. Uh, last year, as you can see, we had 11 people that roughly just you know covered the whole southeast but now uh, we've uh, strategically placed up several other people uh, across the whole southeast and now we're up to uh, 15 with eight in georgia so that's there to implement turn road service to growers and retailers and whoever else we need to uh, just to provide you uh, great service and uh, you know, that's uh, Mr. Hicks, that's what he wants, you know, uh, uh, us to bring to the table is turn road service. Uh, this is kind of a, uh, uh, on our testing and, and nursery site, we got one in Chula, out on David Moore's farm. Uh, in the next couple of years, we plan on bringing a actual breeding facility in the Tiffin area or close by. So. That's, uh, that probably won't ever take place until 2020, but we are trying to uh, uh, implement that in the next couple of years. Uh, we've never had really any kind of uh, a system in our R&D program, and now we got a little bit of structure. We got uh, Dr. Ghost from uh, Texas kind of heading that up, and you can see the tier system that we laid in place. And, me and Scott Russell are uh, based out of Georgia and we'll be doing a lot of the agronomy work and, and research and development in Georgia as well as across the southeast. Uh, just to show you market share uh, in Georgia, we went from 2% to 11% and it's because of growers and retailers that made it all possible and again I'd like to thank you guys for helping us get uh, to that number and achieving it. What I want to throw out that didn't get thrown out last year to late in the season is we offer a 0% financing on our seed. Uh, it's a minimum of a 50 bag purchase. Uh, the, the, the due date on payment is January 15, 2019. You can use it for 18 purposes or tax purposes or 19 tax purposes, whatever benefits your operation the most. 
seed treatment, we offer a big the bio ST, a metaflopper, a metaflopper to dynasty, cruiser, cruiser and dynasty. Uh, that's pretty much the standard that we offer right there. Uh, I'm gonna mainly be talking about 5711 uh, right here, B3XF, but I also wanted to point out one variety that we're uh, looking into, 4747. It is an actual mid, mid to full, a little bit of full. It is an indeterminate variety. It is 100% bacterial blight resistant, and we're basically going to be putting it in people's hands like uh, Mark and uh, Dr. Whitaker and other people like that and even Kevin and Wes will probably be able to see this variety too. We're trying to, you know, uh, phase out the 4601 and replace it with that because of the bacterial blight uh, marker that it possesses. But I'm going to be talking about 5711 the most. Again, the ones that, you know, we're going to be really pushing in Georgia is 5711, 5007, and 3522. 5711 is going to be suited for any kind of uh, soil that you got, dry land irrigated, love stress. Uh, it can handle stress very, very well. Uh, plant early. I wouldn't plant this cotton variety no later than May the 25th. You could probably get by with it June the 1st. But when I tell you it's a full season, it is 10 to 14 days longer than anything that I've seen on the market today. Uh, with that being said, uh, it is, it, it, we don't need to use any picks at all. I mean, uh, stance at all need a lot of picks. Uh, the, the, the picks application should be initiated at Penn Hill uh, Square. Uh, not when it's knee tall, but around 12 inches tall. Uh, and, you know, you're going to have to manage this cotton. It's a cotton you can't just throw out in the field and, you know, expect it to yield three bales without managing it. And managing it, I mean, by picks and lots of it. You just need to pound and basically put it on a schedule. Uh, especially on your stepper uh, soil type. Put it on schedule, pin head two weeks later hit it again and by the time you uh, hit first bloom you ought to have two to three applications of picks on it where you can get it stopped in the vegetative mode and put it into the reproductive mode. Anyway, one thing that stands out to me the most is bacterial blight immune. It is 100% resistant <coughs> or immune to bacterial blight. You know, bacterial blight wasn't as big an issue this year as it was in, in 15 and 16, but Who's to say that it might not just show us over the face at any time, you know, over the next couple of years. So, but anyway, this is a full season variety. It's a smooth leaf, so, you know, it's less attractive to piercing and sucking uh, insects like white flies, aphids, thrips, things of that matter. So, at uh, Maricot, we're trying to implement more varieties that don't have any hair on them at all for that particular reason. Uh, this particular variety is not going to do good in strip trials, it's not going to do good in OVTs. It needs to be planted where it can be managed by itself. On your right, you'll see 5711. And I think this was in Mitchell County right here. And on the left, 1646. As you can see, it's a significant difference there, I think. Uh, the 5711 ended up doing about 150 pounds more than our competition there. 5007, not going to spend a whole bunch of time uh, on it. It's just, I mean, it's a, it's a great, you know, one cotton fits all. I mean, it does what it needs to do. It can handle stress, be planted on your sandier type soils, and it doesn't require a whole bunch of picks unless it's on uh, different type of soils. 4601, uh, I mean, we're really not going to be pushing this a whole bunch. So, but if you do want to push, I mean, plant this, I mean, it needs to be placed on irrigated type soil. I mean, irrigated uh, land with heavier type soils. And plant date needs to be roughly at the end of May or June the 10th or 15th. It needs to be done on a field by field basis and moderate pitching applications are involved with uh, 4601. 
3522, a lot of people look past this, but in a lot of trials it does very, very well, especially in OBCs and in my own personal trials and in consultant trials. Uh, it does very, very well planted late uh, behind wheat or double crop. Uh, pretty much dry land or irrigated type of uh, uh, soil, any type of soil and minimal pitch. And uh, we had a grower this year that's in Concord County that planted it June the 26th buying sweet corn and it ended up uh, picking 1,100 pounds. So that's pretty significant, you know, from that aspect, planting so late and still obtaining, you know, such a good yield. Right here is a long value across all the 2,017 plots that we had in the southeast. Uh, as you can see, uh, 50, and, the, and the southeast, I mean from Virginia all the way down to Alabama, uh, as you can see right here, 5711 is a little over 5 cents, and 3522 is right at 4 cents, and 5007 and 4601 is between 4 and 4.5 four cents. So, we got premium uh, type cotton that we try to deliver to our customers. Coffee County uh, on farm trial that I put in, this is a five acre plot. As you can see, we didn't beat our competitor in pound but four and a half pound. And you know, that's not the three dollars and thirty seven cents an acre different, but once you add the loan value in there, we beat them two cents. So that up the ante right there to twenty three dollars and some odd cents right there. So you got you know, a, a, a cotton that is consistent and it's averaging up there with, you know, good competitors and, you know, you're getting a premium grade along with full season and, you know, that's what it takes to grow uh, cotton in Georgia is having a full season variety to make good grades. This right here was in Benio County, uh, irrigated trial. I initiated this one myself and as you can see, I blanketed the whole trial with eight ounces. But again, I think if I'd have initiated a, six, a 16 ounce shot at Pinhead Square instead of an eight ounce shot, that would have been up here at the top. But as you can see, we had several varieties above the trial average and 5007 was right at the trial average. And if anybody got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. We got a minute. Any questions? Got it. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. All. <clears throat> all right. Welcome this afternoon. My name is Russell Newey. I'm a cotton development specialist with Phytogen, and Steve Brown and I share responsibilities in Georgia. Today I'm going to give you a brief overview of our current phytogen lineup and then give you an update on the enlist weed control system in cotton. Um, starting with our current varieties on the left, you see the WRF varieties over our older technology and then we're moving into our enlist traded wide strike free varieties on the far side of the screen. Uh, the first thing we'll focus on is phytogen 444, which is one of our market leaders and we expect it to be a variety big variety again for us this year. Um, and then when we look at the new enlist varieties, most of these have been in the market only one year and, and then we're looking at some that are coming into the market this year. So I'll talk about these new 400s that we just released about two weeks ago. If you look at this slide, we don't talk much about bacterial blight, but we've tried to move our whole portfolio in that direction. So the only two varieties on this slide that are susceptible would be 333 and 487. In regard to bacterial black and everything else, you should expect to be resistant. So talking about 444, it's been around for several years now, and it's kind of proven itself it's done very well. If you look at the county trials in Georgia in 2016, it was the number one variety. And Jared's trials on farm in 2017, it did very well. We had quite an adverse year this year, so it was able to to perform in quite an unstable situation, so we're pretty happy with it. Um, looking at 444 itself, again, it's got proven superior yield and premium fiber quality. When you look at some of the um, awards that we heard at, uh, at lunchtime, 
I know 444 was involved in some of that. So some of the things I'd like to point out briefly about 444, it has a very smooth leaf in the type of white fly pressure that we saw last year. We heard from quite a few people, either they saw reduced white fly pressure on 444, which allowed them to either delay the first application or have fewer total applications of insecticide on that variety. Another thing is excellent seedling vigor with 444. Um, last year we had a lot of nematode problems as well, so a variety with good vigor gives you an early start that allows you to grow off and help avoid some of those problems with nematodes. 444 is a bushy type plant, and we found that it responds very well to PGRs, and we're able to manage it relatively well. So looking at a variety like this in the marketplace, we always like to compare it to some of the either top competitors or varieties that are in the marketplace receiving a lot of, a lot of attention. And in this case, we compared it to 1646 and 5007. You see that 1646 is comparable on yield and staple, and 444 pulls ahead with the <coughs> micromere. So that whole quality package is something that's really um, a market leader in, in this case. So switching gears from the WRF to the W3FE, I'll explain that system just a little bit. That new trait package is Wide Strike 3, which gives you a third trait for uh, worm control. The F is just an abbreviation for Roundup Flex, and then the E gives you full tolerance to 2,4-D, and also full tolerance to glufosinate or Liberty type herbicide. With this package, our breeders have done an excellent job trying to put things together and move forward, like including bacterial blight with it, all of these varieties. Now we're moving toward putting root knot nematode resistance in all of these varieties. So if most of you, I think we're in the other room listening to Dr. Kim right just a minute ago, and he talked about sometimes you have a trade-off between either having a bacterial blight resistant or root knot nematode resistant variety. This year we're gonna have two new varieties that we can offer with both of those traits in the W3FE package. So I know uh, earlier this morning, I made an analogy that one of our new reps made he says last year 444 got married and had triplets, so I'm going to introduce you to the three triplets. Um, Fires in 430, 440, and 480. So let's look at some of those characteristics. 430 is going to be a mid-maturing variety. It's very broadly adapted. We put it in the OVTs across the U.S. this year, and if you look at the OVTs in any of the states, you'll see that it performed near the top in many cases. Um, we see exceptional yield out of it. With 444 quality, we're, we're trying to attain 38 plus staple. We see that this staple is over 36. 430 does have a, a little bit of leaf hairs, so we call it light hair, and it's a medium plant height. So again, it's gonna be easier to manage with PGRs. Moving on to two of the new varieties that have double gene root knot nematode resistance, which we're calling highly resistant to root knot nematode, will be fighters in 440 and fighters in 480. 440 is closest in number to 444, so there's several things about it that make it most like 444. It's a smooth leaf variety. It has the best fiber quality out of the three that we just released. You can have staple almost as good as 444 with a micronary that's very similar, and it's got fiber strength that's about two points better than 444. Again, it's medium plant height, and we see that it fits this lower southeast. So Georgia, the lower parts of South Carolina, and South Alabama is where 440 fits the best. Um, and again, it is root knot nematode resistant. 480 has everything we just talked about, but it has a semi smooth leaf rather than a smooth leaf. And again, very close fiber quality to 444. Micro is going to be slightly higher than what we see with 444. 480 is a little bit more broadly adapted. So again, if you look at the OBT, you're going to see that it fits just about everywhere you look at it. So it's always good to look at how these new varieties compare to a proven standard like 444. I have a lot of conversations with growers and they really enjoy growing 444. It yields well for them. They make money with the fiber quality and they always ask, when are you going to bring us 444 with the enlist trade? So we now have three varieties that are in that yield category with 444 with the traits that they're asking for. I'm going to go ahead and switch gears now and give you a quick update on the Enlist Weed Control System. Last year, 2017, 
we launched the illicit weed control system in cotton and uh, we were able to get over half a million acres planted to fight it in varieties with the enlist trait and we treated a little over 600,000 acres with enlist duo and a little bit of an experimental product that I'll introduce you to in a minute. Uh, one thing that makes the enlist system different than a competition is Colex D technology and what that is is a very stable formulation that provides near zero volatility. So if you do your job as a applicator and get it to where it's supposed to be, the likelihood of it getting back up and moving is near minuscule. So we've got two herbicide products. One is Enlist Duo, which you've heard a lot about. It is 2,4-D choline plus glyphosate. But the one I'm excited to tell you about is Enlist One, which is a straight goods 2,4-D choline, which allows quite a bit of tank mix flexibility and allows you to practice good weed science, uh, which I'll explain in a minute. If you recall, Enlist Duo gave you 23 different novels. We thought that was very flexible. Enlist One has a package that allows 47 different nozzles. And the nozzles are exciting, but to have the flexibility to go in the tank with this product, with all the different herbicides, insecticides, et cetera, is the part that is going to provide a lot of flexibility at the grower level. We've got a website called enlisttankmix.com. It's constantly being updated as we test new products. And um, yesterday I checked it out. It had over 260 products on there that can go in the tank with Enlist One. And over 40 of those were herbicides, over a dozen were insecticides. These are the important herbicides that I think most growers in Georgia that deal with cotton will be interested in. Uh, a bunch of residuals, uh, many glufosinates, many glyphosates, and some grass materials. So last year we had the opportunity to play with this product in the field some and uh, just want to show you a few of those results, just kind of before and after. This was uh, Enlist One mixed with Liberty and mixed with Dual. So we were able to put some residual down and get back to practicing good weed science and layering on residual. So you see before and after there, of course, on the edge of the field is going to be pretty hairy, but it cleaned it up pretty well. This is another grower that had a big flush of pigweed after the planting. And one shot of Enlist Duo is what you're looking at here. Um, this is something that at planting, he had emerged pigweed, which we all know is a no-no. You don't want to do that. That's not something I'd recommend. I'd much rather see him go in with a disc. But regardless, he was able to clean that up. The one thing I want to point out is the crop tolerance to that 4A or 2,4-D at that point in time. It came right through it. And that's what the trait delivers. Uh, looking at crop tolerance of tank mixes over the top, uh, this was just a couple days after a three-way tank mix, including Liberty and residuals, and this is about a week after. So, see, it did a number on the weeds, and the cotton looks very good. So, we're excited to have this to deliver to you. And uh, if you have any questions, Marvin Stewart's here, along with several of the other reps. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Can you mix it with the cloth? Yes. Any other questions? testing program there. Hundreds of hybrids, corn hybrids go through there every year. So. 
He said that variety selection is not about identifying which lines did best over the past year, which sometimes we look at. It's about predicting which lines will do best in the future. That's a big task, so how do you go about that? Well, I found that if I look at data from as many environments as possible, and I, I make choices based on the overall performance across those environments, it helps me. Um, I carefully consider the extreme environments, and when I'm faced with a limited number of years, I try to look at as many locations in that year as I possibly can. The University of Georgia does an outstanding job doing this, providing these locations across years. I'm going to use the backdrop of the Georgia on farm trials to talk about the stability of cropland 3885. Uh, 3885 and 3787 both have the same background. 3787 is a Bogart 2 uh, roundup version, uh, 3885 is the Bogart 2 round of flex version. Combined, this germplasm has been 97 of the on farm trials. Uh, that's from 2013 to 2017. During that time, there were 38 different cotton varieties that were entered. And these are the best, these are the best uh, that the companies like to put into these trials. So it's this very elite class that's being uh, looked at. Again. The top, this top line is the 3885. You can see dry land performance, irrigated performance, and the average rank. Uh, 3885 was entered from uh, 2015 to 2017. 55% of the time, the dry land trials is in the top four. 66% of the time the irrigated trials was in the top four, and the average of the yearly ranks was 3.7. Very similar to the same same background, way 37.87. Yield stability across locations and environments is pretty rare. It's pretty rare to have that variety in there for that long, for one thing. This is my stability graph, uh, a little simpler than some that you've seen. But all I've done is I've graphed the location average from the lowest to the highest on the red, the red line, and then I graph 3885, it's the blue line. And you've got a little bit of play here, but it's not bad. You know, when you have the big spikes above and especially below the line is where you get a lot of variability, uh, not very much stability. Really 3885 only has one spot right there that it really sunk below the, the trial average. So it's the stability that I was talking about. 3787, much similar story in the, the location in 2013, 2014. Add the official variety trials in with the on-farm trials. This slide's kind of busy. Um, I, I've gotten this from Seed Matrix. Seed Matrix is a variety database tool. This offered through Cotton Incorporated. All the public data is there, and you can kind of slice it, dice it, look at it interesting ways, different ways. What this allows me to do, on um, the way this is set up, is look across uh, trials that don't have all the same varieties in it. don't have a balanced data set, so it's really comparing it to the trial averages. Right there, it shows you the number of, of tests um, that that variety was in. And this is the minimum 40 tests to make this list. And then you have the top performer. Um, the top performer is one that finished in the top 25% of the trial. And then the, the above average is, is not the top 25% of the trial, but it's above average. And of course, the below average is, is the time number of trials that it finished below the trial average. I have these sorted based on that far right column from the least amount to the most amount. Going back to what I said, I want to recommend when it doesn't flop because I don't want to, that to come back on me. So that's how I, I look at it. Uh, so in this particular case, 1538 was above average most of the time, and it, it was in the top 25%, 51% of the time. And you can see 71 trials, crop plan 3085, stability. That's, that's the message I'd like to get across is the stability of 3085. Robert Kosser. Um, he was here earlier, he had to leave at Ketchup Lane. He is the cropland cotton lead with Winfield United. He's the guy that, that uh, helps decide what cropland cottons come, come forward. Uh, don't have a lot. And the reason we don't have a lot in the mid to full market is because haven't had one that's performing like this background has so far. Uh, when, when they get that, he said that's when we'll have a, a new crop, mid to full cropland right. There is a medium, a mid season, uh, 9608. It was in the Georgia OBTs this year. Um, solid performance. Got any questions? Uh, all this information is, is available for agri-agency locations, and I'm always phone call away. Thank you.